Hi stamping friends, it's Claire Daly, Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Melbourne, Australia. Today we're going to look at the inked embossing folder technique. Now this gives you a really great two-tone effect with your embossing folders and it's super simple to do, so that's a win-win. So I'll show you a few different folders and the effects you can get um, and we'll talk about this um, one a little bit more at the end. So essentially what you're doing in this technique is you are applying ink to the debossed side of your embossing folder. Now, when you open your embossing folder and if you rub your hands along it, you'll see on this one, this side, the um, flower, the floral image, this is the ornate floral embossing folder, so pretty. Um, you'll see that this is raised and then on this side, if you use your finger now, you can see that the flowers actually go in. So this is the debossed side. This is the side that you actually apply the ink to. Um, so that when you pop your paper in there and the pattern pushes through, it'll actually push through and show up the colour of the cardstock um, for the pattern. And then the background will be the colour of the ink that you place. So I'll show you what I mean with that. Um, we're going to apply... Soft Sea Foam, one of my favourite Stampin' Up! colours, a really beautiful pale green. So let's go. Now, you can use other ways to apply the ink, um, but I find ink pads give the best um, effect. If you've got a rubber brayer, that gives a good effect as well. Using the soft um, foam brayers I find doesn't give you as good an effect because it's a bit patchy where the ink goes but the other thing is because it's soft it actually gets into the grooves and so you don't get as good an effect as good a, you don't get as much of an effect um, when you pop your cardstock in so let's have a look how this one goes so I've got my ink pad and I'm literally just going to apply it now don't worry because this just Pop it under the um, pop it under your a running tap at the end, and the ink just literally runs straight off. So just until visually it looks like you've got good coverage, then we shall pop our cardstock in there. I've just got a piece of whisper white which I've cut to card front size. We'll close that up. And now we just run it through our die cut embossing machine um, like normal. Now I'm very excited to be using the stamp and cut and emboss machine for the first time on my video. Um, beautiful machine, looks beautiful, folds up, really stable when I pop, pop it on my normal surface. Um, really stable, great handle, great ergonomic handle and also great handle at the top there for easy transportation and folds down and folds up so it's really nice and compact um, so i love my new machine and the um, all of the plates have got numbers on them so that you know which ones to use so with the 3d embossing folders you use the base plate number one and you use number four so we're going to pop that in there I'm not usually doing it sideways so Pop the sandwich in there, make sure it's straight, and off we go. Straighten up my mat because I like my mat to be straight on the videos. Okay, let's have a look at the effects that we got. Oh, I love it. It's so pretty. So there we go. That's the one with the ornate floral embossing folder. So I can't wait to get to work using that one as a background or as an element for a card. Um, just think that's really pretty. So that's soft sea foam with the ornate floral embossing folder. And that's the effect that I got with that one. So let's have another go. This time I'm going to use the Evergreen Forest. I'm going to do it a little bit subtle. Now, one of my favourite neutral colours at the moment is Grey Granite. Absolutely love it. It's a 
um, cross between Sahara sand and crumb cake, I think. And uh, it's just a really great neutral to use. So I'm going to use this as a background for a card, I think. So again, we open it up. We look for the debossed side. So this is the embossed side. This is the debossed. So this is where we're going to be popping our ink. And again, just applying, oops, and all over the, but that's what it's there for, right? Don't be wearing white when you're doing this. This is another messy one. Okay. Now I usually use a card front size piece, even though I might be using a smaller piece on a card. The reason for that is you can trim off any spots that you know you're not as keen on having on your card. So I'll pop that down. Whoops, moved a bit. This could give a bit of an interesting effect, but let's see how we go. I'll just um, do the embossing this way this time since I've shown you the machine. So we've got our base plate, number one. Now with the 3D embossing folders, I find putting them through spine first is best. So even though the card stock sideways. And number four, and we will roll that through. Not really enough room here. How did we go? Oh, see, I still love that. That's just beautiful. So the benefit of doing the card front size piece now is a little bit of ink up there is um, I'll probably trim that um, and use it uh, as a side piece for a card. But I love the effect um, that gives with the gray granite. And um, when you put some um, red and green traditional um, stamp and traditional Christmas colors in front of there, I think that's going to look really pretty. So that was the Evergreen Forest, which is the new embossing folder that is in the um, August to December uh, mini catalog, the one with the Christmas bits and pieces. So that's absolutely beautiful. One of my favorite folders at the moment. Okay, so let's get on to the one that I used in the card now. Oh, actually one more thing I want to show you with that one is I actually did a piece earlier using um, pear pizzazz ink as my base card instead of the whisper white and then using mossy meadow and that was the same the evergreen excuse me evergreen embossing folder so that turned out really great as well um, so it doesn't have to be whisper white cardstock you can use a lighter cardstock and apply a darker ink and you're getting the same um, results as well so many different ways you can use this technique Okay, next I want to show you how to make the panel that I on the card that I showed you at the start. So this one uses the dandelion embossing folder. So and I'm using seaside spray ink, which is a beautiful soft blue um, with a bit of a gray, bit of a gray toning, which I really like to use. It's very soft. Okay, so I've got the debossed side again, applying the ink. Make sure you're applying lots of ink around the dandelion area because that's quite intricate. And make sure you've got good coverage. Now I found um, in using this dandelion folder before that I actually need to add an extra shim. So sometimes um, you need to do that. Now shim is just an extra piece of cardstock which adds a teeny bit more pressure. Doesn't need an extra plate or anything but um, just I need to add a teeny bit more pressure with this one so all a shim is is just an extra layer of cardstock so we're going to put our base our cardstock for our technique inside and again I've got the base plate one and the specialty plate so I'm going to pop those in like normal again with the hinge that I'm going in first normal but I'm also going to apply um, over where the um, cardstock is I'm going to just put another piece of cardstock to add a little bit more pressure I found when I put it through um, the first time doing this technique I didn't quite get the pressure to give a good effect so we'll just pop that aside and that gives a much better effect. So there we go. 
So what I would do then is just trim the parts that I want to use and um, it's not, it's, you'll see that it's not perfect, but I actually really like that. It almost gives a crackle paint weathered effect, really. It's really quite beautiful if you um, like that vintagey look. So what I would do would I trim that down. Now, I've had people say to me they don't know how to ink the edges. Um, so I just want to show you that. We're using um, sponge daubers for that. And um, all I do is get the same colour, because I've inked the edges on this in grey granite. So dab it into there. And I just lightly on an angle put the sponge dauber over the edges like so. So um, start really lightly and add up the... Um, Add more if you want to. It's you can't take it away, but you can always add more. So that's how I do my my um, sponged edges as well. So I would just trim that down to the size I wanted to use. It was um, eight centimeters by twelve and a half centimeters, and I've cut a people per piece of purple posy. Say that fast. Um, pop that onto the base grey granite cardstock. So I'd hear that first, and then with my um, the inked piece of, um, or the inked seaside spray piece, I've actually popped that up with dimensionals. And before I popped it onto the card, I tied a few different trims around the bottom. So this is some of the Purple Posy linen trim. I've actually cut that in half just to make it a little bit, um, a little bit thinner um, trim. And I've popped a bit of lace, which I've cut in half as well. And also some of our linen trim and um, tied that in a bow. And just, just a sentiment which I've punched out and there we go. So pretty simple card, but really the technique is the star of the show, which is um, what I wanted it to be on this card. So I hope that's been really helpful for you. And if you have any questions, please um, be sure to ask them to ask them. And you'll also be able to subscribe if you would like to get weekly tutorials into your email inbox from me. And this was actually one of our tutorial cards and I'm referring um, the readers here to be able to see some of the techniques in action on my YouTube channel as well. So if you like my channel, please subscribe. Um, and I'd love if you could refer anybody else that you think might enjoy these tutorials. And um, I'll see you back here again soon. Thank you very much.